Okay, guys, we got a 2007 Mini convertible. Uh, I think this is the R52 model is what BMW or what Mini call it. Uh, and we're having audio issues. In this case, I've already checked out my amp, so I'm pretty sure that's where it is. I've got a cert, uh, short in there. Um, I saw a little moisture. I'm sorry, not moisture, a little rust. Looks like some moisture got to it at some point. Uh, so I'm going to be replacing the amp. So first I'll show you what's going on here. Turn the power on. And so you see the actual, it's actually working right now. I turn it on, turn it up. So it's actually working right now, surprisingly. But it does go out sporadically. So it just went out and you'll notice here what I can do is if I move the steering wheel, it will actually start to play as long as I'm moving the steering wheel. So I'll show you the location of the amplifier first. Uh, in the R52 model, it's actually below the passenger seat. So you can see here, I've already moved the passenger seat up and sitting right below, the amp is underneath that metal cover. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that and we'll get started on this installation. And actually the first thing I'll do before I remove that amp, I'll actually go to the rear of this Mini and disconnect the negative uh, cable from the battery. Just want to make sure I don't cause any shorts or cause any other problems in the car. Be right back. Okay guys, I'm back to the trunk here. Like I said, I'm going to disconnect the negative terminal from my battery. I do have a memory saver for this car that you plug into the OBD port and you connect to an external battery source or power source so if you don't want to lose your settings in the car. Um, there's no special security code on this radio or anything like that, so I'm not that concerned. This is a 10 millimeter bolt uh, or 10 millimeter nut here. So I just got a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench that I'm going to use to disconnect this negative terminal. Sorry, the negative battery post terminal, sorry. That was pretty easy. All right. So now that we've disconnected power, we'll head around here. As you can see, the cover for our amplifier is below the seat. I'm hoping I don't have to remove the seat, but we're going to see. Um, I'm going to give it a try, see what all um, screws and things like that that we need to disconnect to get access to the amp. Be right back, guys.
must have had moisture in here somewhere. So I'm going to clean this up. Ten millimeter. Space, but there's definitely moisture on this connector. So I'm going to try to clean off as much of this as I can. All right. So I think I found the source of the problem. As you'll see, I have a little corrosion on the connector going to the amp. The other amp also has similar corrosion. So I'm hoping I don't have to replace this connector. So what I've gotten. What I've got now, sorry, I've got CRC, electronic cleaner. I've used this before on ECUs and some other devices to get that corrosion off. It works pretty good. So I'm going to use this along with plastic brish bristle brush, a little fine brush to help scrub in there. And then I've also just got some of the dust. I'm not near my compressor right now, just to dry it off. And then once I finish, we'll wire everything back together. You'll see here, this is the seat belt passenger occupancy sensor uh, and I'm not sure what these other two are oh there's also an airbag in there so this is probably the airbag seat belt and the occupancy sensor is here um, so these had to be disconnected from the seat to get the seat out so you'll see and actually what I'm going to do is protect the finish here with this cleaner that I'm using so I'm going to put down some shop towels while we clean this off. So let's see how well it works. So we'll spray a little bit in there. And we'll scrub it. Yep, it's already coming clean. If you look, that's a big difference already. Now, what I want to make sure of is that I also get the cleaner down inside of the terminals as well. So you can see there, it's pretty, pretty clean. We're going to spray it inside there. Let it soak a little bit. See it evaporate really fast. Really fast. See if we get anything clean. And I actually got it pretty clean. Let's try it one more time.
that connector pretty clean. Now we're just going to work in reverse to install my replacement amp. This is a replacement amp that I ordered online. It's for the R52. So, and you'll notice that there's three different part numbers. If you ever go look this up, if you look up this part number from uh, Mini or BMW, you'll see that there's actually three different part numbers and they are all the exact same amp. Connect it. First thing I'm going to do is install the amp to the mounting plate. So we'll do that first. Which will go here. You'll see there's two studs here, which will go into these two holes. Like so. and clean this tray out pretty dirty what in the world whatever these things are in here they just started to react and literally started jumping out of this tray. Let me get this out of here. I have never seen anything like that. Material is all over. Don't have any idea what that was or what that is.
idea what this was. It's like some type of copper flake or something. I'm just pushing that grommet back on to get ready to reinstall the amp. Back into the box. start to reinstall the amp into the box. Get the cover here, I'm sorry.
going to clean up. Go ahead and vacuum it out since I got the seat off. And put the rest of it back together. Sorry guys, thought I was recording already. So now I'm getting ready to reinstall the seat. I vacuumed out underneath while I was in there. So you'll see there's four connectors right there. One, two, three, four. These two are obviously color coded. The black and the white are actually different sizes to make sure that you don't mix them up. So you'll see the blue and the yellow there. And then the two connectors here, these two female ends are for these two plugs. And as you can see, they're different sizes to make sure you don't mix them up. So I'll go ahead and get this reconnected and get those two T40 bolts uh, back into the rails on the seat and get the seat reinstalled. Now comes the test. Hope this works. This job runs about $1,100 to $1,200 at your nearest BMW dealership. But just wanted to show you you can do it yourself. Let's hope it works. Here's the moment of truth. Yeah.